everybody welcome on back to the channel uh, today I want to kind of go over the Timber King 1600 and my experience with it over the last uh, two years I've owned it uh, kind of share with you some of the things I like some of the things that I uh, feel I could use improvement and some of the things that I just flat, flat out don't like um, so we'll walk around the mill we'll start towards the front and work our way back We're up here at the front of the trailer here uh, at the hitch and and one of the things that I've seen on other mills is uh, the, the addition of a breakaway uh, hitch or a pullout hitch so that when you set this up uh, it's a theft deterrent and this mill doesn't have that it's not a deal breaker obviously um, but it's something to consider all right so we're up here at the bed of the mill and, and one of the things that I absolutely love about the Timber King Mill is the fact that this, this bed is not only made from very beefy steel, but it's also solid welded. So adjustment issues, bolts coming loose. Uh, it's not gonna be a problem with the Timber King Mill. And I know a lot of the competitors out there have bolt together beds, even on their portable mills until you get to a really high end mill. Um, this one's solid welded and I haven't had any problems with it. I've had some very large logs on here Probably the biggest are around 42 inches um, This mill's not even rated to cut that but it did so uh, Something to consider is how solid this bed can be uh, Or how solid this bed is on the Timber King compared to some of the competitors some of the finer details uh, about these mills is, is, is stuff like the stainless stripping that's on the bed and as many of you know who have sawn already or have experience with it, um, especially oak species and, and, and other types of wood. When they touch any kind of metal that stains it, um, it can be as even a short of amount of time of picking lumber up with your forks on your tractor, and it can cause that blue staining. But having the stainless steel stripping on the bed of the mill helps prevent some of that staining that could be attributed to the mill. Walking and talking here a little bit. Um, these log stops, there's four of them, and on the Timber King 1600, they, they come up uh, this way. Uh, where on the, on the Timber King 2000 and up, they, they, they come straight up and down on a chain. So um, the, the problem I've noticed with this type of log stop is if you have any, any sort of branch or knot sticking out this side of the log, when you try to raise those up, sometimes they'll get stuck on that knot or that limb or whatever the case so you'll you'll do a lot of trimming that you you wouldn't ordinarily have to do if the if the log stops came straight up and down uh, where these come up at an angle it causes some issues but you know it, it gets the job done it's just something to consider if you if you're looking at this mill uh, this particular mill or one like it in the same similar price point um, that is something to consider moving on up so uh, on the Timber King 1600, the, this is the log clamp, and it, it is hydraulic in and out, but it's manually adjusted up and down. Um, one of the things that if I could upgrade on this mill, that would be one of the top things I would upgrade to have that hydraulic up and down as well as in and out. One thing that I really enjoy about this mill is this chain log turner. Um, you know, sim similar price pointed mills, you're not gonna get that chain log turner. Uh, with a Timber King you do. And it's just a tremendous help when you're loading big logs. I mean, it, it, it'll twist the log around 36 inch with little uh, issues. Uh, you know, obviously if, if the log's not perfectly round, there's got a lot of knots or crotch figure or uh, whatever the case in it, it's gonna sometimes get bound up, but you know, it could easily be fixed with a cant hook and these log loaders are another lifesaver. Right now, I, I catch myself a lot of times just loading the log with a tractor, but these right here are, are tremendous help, especially when you're doing jobs for people where you may not have access to equipment. You can roll those logs up on those loaders, throw it up on the mill, spin it around where you want it, clamp it down, and get the cutting. So I feel obligated to say this because um, this is probably true for a lot of people that feel like they want a sawmill and they want to get into it. Um, one thing to consider with a sawmill, it doesn't matter what brand you go with, um, you, you, you kind of need to be mechanically inclined to, to own one of these. Uh, if you're having to 
take it to you know a, a dealer or uh, a shop every time something goes wrong or something's not acting right uh, you'll bankrupt yourself trying to fix everything so I, I you know I wasn't the most mechanically inclined person on the planet obviously but I've learned a lot about this mill the more you learn about it uh, the easier it is to solve problems and troubleshoot things but back to my point if you're not mechanically inclined you can't fix things on your own you don't have some basic tools uh, you're, you're gonna have a set of challenges owning a mill that you're probably not a hundred percent prepared for and, and there's so many adjustments on these mills that that can get out and you got to think when you're loading three four five thousand pound logs on these mills it doesn't matter how graceful you are about it it it's it, things are gonna happen things are gonna get knocked out of uh, alignment and you're gonna have to come back through and and, and readjust those things and that's something to consider if you're in the market for a sawmill. One of those adjustments that uh, I was talking about earlier when I'm talking about being mechanically inclined and you need to you need to get there if you're not already is, is these blade guides here. These blade guides are critically important to a straight cut along with other factors, straight blade, level bed, all that good stuff. But that's been the number one culprit when I get a wavy cut, aside from a dull blade, is, is these rollers being out of alignment. And what you have to think about is, you know, when you're cutting logs, a lot of times, um, you know, you may bump the edge of the log with your guide ruler and it's going to knock it out of calibration. You have to come in and fix it. Make sure that the blade, when it's running along the, the sawmill, it, it is running parallel to the bed. And if it's not, you're, you're going to have issues with straight cuts. So that's one thing uh, to consider. And, and another thing I, I, I didn't realize the importance of when I first got this mill and I, it cost me a set of guide rollers is those things need greased sometimes multiple times a day and you have to imagine I mean how fast is that blade spinning and then that little I don't know two inch bearing is, is spinning way faster so the whole time you're running this mill that the, the thing's just spinning at an insane speed and if you don't keep grease in there they'll burn up like I, like my first set did and then you'll find yourself having to order new parts from Timber King. So um, if those things stop for even a second, it can get a flat spot on the on the bottom because uh, you know it's not turning. The blade causes friction and wear on it, and they're not terribly expensive. But that's a couple hundred bucks that I could have spent on something else if I would have paid attention. So something to think about. One of the issues I had uh, with the mill is there's a plate that holds the the door to the blade closed on this side it's missing it fell off uh, i don't know if that was a crappy weld job oh it obviously was a crappy weld job but uh, that was a little aggravating you know you pay this much money for a mill you don't want little things like that just breaking um, also one of the teeth in my chain log turner uh, broke out which you know some of this is just wear and tear um, but this right here I felt like could have could have been avoided. Um, another little complaint is this this mill's rust free and it spends most of its time under cover, but I don't know if you'll be able to catch this because of the sunlight, but this post is just covered in rust. And this you know, this mill's two years old, so that's uh yeah, if it was all that way, it would be different, but it's just this one. So I'm thinking probably somebody at the factory didn't properly brush that before they painted it or powder coated it or whatever kind of finish they do here. But that's, you know, again, you know, it's just like you don't want to see that kind of stuff happening on a mill at this price point or any price point for that matter. Now let's talk about this Kohler engine for a minute. This thing has been... A pain in my butt and I've heard nothing but good things about these engines from most people but my luck with this thing has been terrible it's had two carburetor rebuilds uh, had a push rod bent on it had to take it to a Kohler dealer to have the thing basically rebuilt because of that um, what else had gas feed issues um, it's just been hit or miss whether this thing runs <laughs> or not um, and for a mill with, you know, as low of hours as 
as this thing has. I mean, I don't do this as a full-time job. Um, it's more of a hobby, but uh, you can see the hour meter here. It's got 100 hours on it, and it's already had all those issues. So um, I'm not a big fan of the Kohler engine. Uh, now, the Kohler engine comes on a lot of mills. It's not a Timber King thing. I'm sure they got some sort of contract with Kohler. Um, but goodness, you know, I mean, you would think a brand new engine would last longer than, uh, you know, at the first, the first carburetor we both came at uh, around 24 hours. And then the catastrophic failure came at 75, um, where that push rod uh, came loose and got bent. Basically, they need a top end rebuild, but that's something. One thing I love about the, the blade adjustment is, is having this gauge here handy so you can, you know, know how, what kind of pressure you have or tension you have on your blade. Some mills, um, you know, that compete with this one don't, don't have any uh, clear way to tell your blade tension, but this is, this is handy to have. So if you're putting your blade at 1200 PSI, which is what Timber King recommends, it's, it's very easy to do that with, with some precision. So aside from the log clamp, this would be the second thing that I wish I had uh, hydraulics on, is this adjustable uh, blade guide. Um, the way you adjust this is unscrew this and then manually slide that in and out, which if you... Uh, don't know already the timber kings have a stationary command post back here in the back so once i start cutting and that head gets away from me i can't do anything to adjust it so if i notice that it's gonna it's gonna hit you know somewhere down the log uh, i'm kind of i either need a helper or have to stop the cut and run up there and adjust it that's just kind of a pain in the butt i wish i had the ability to adjust that in and out from back here so um, something to consider there I'm back here at the stationary command post, and this is where all the magic happens. So, um, this has essential hydraulics. It doesn't have hydraulic everything like we talked about. It doesn't have the hydraulics for the up and down on the, the log clamp, and it doesn't have hydraulics for the in and out on the blade guide. It doesn't have hydraulic tow boards. Uh, it doesn't have hydraulic log stops. The log stops are a manual operation here at the back, and most of you guys can find videos a dime a dozen on how these things work so I'm not really going to go through that um, but the hydraulics that, that are here work phenomenal um, I have had some power issues with them I called Timber King and they told me how to go through and adjust the PSI on the hydraulics so I did that and it's worked uh, much better I uh, still probably question whether or not that it can um, perform at the at the weight rating that timber king gives it because i've had some questionable issues with that um but it does what i need it to do and when i use a when i find logs to to cut i you know i, I do it with reason i, I know if, if it's a log that's too big for this mill to handle i usually just pass on it so uh scouting your logs appropriately for the mill you have you know that's an important part of being a productive sawyer so uh, but the hydraulics back here, they work phenomenal, and I've been happy with them. Uh, no issues there um, to, to speak of. So, but for the money, for the money that you're spending and the hydraulics that you're you know, you're getting, the hydraulic capability that you're getting, uh, it's it's hard to compete with what Timber King can provide at the price point that they can provide it. So, having said all that, um, would I recommend a Timber King 1600 to to you? Uh, the answer to that is yes, I would. Uh, now there's some things to consider. Um, you know, I obviously like most of you, I, I, I looked around, you know, I, I checked out Woodmiser, I checked out Norwood, I checked out Timber King, um, Cooks. I, you know, I looked at all of them and I wound up uh, going with the Timber King because I felt like at the price point I was at and the capabilities it came with, I was happy with. Now there there are some things about Timber King that I don't particularly like. One of those is that the Timber King office is in Missouri and I'm in East Tennessee so if I needed anything from them um, 
it's a long drive from here. So uh, Wood Miser is located, the closest Wood Miser, Wood Miser, Georgia, is only about a three hour drive for me. Um, that's about 10 hours less than a trip to Timber King. So that's something to consider is, you know, uh, proximity. Now I will say service after the sale has been phenomenal with Timber King. Anytime I have any issues or anything like that, I can call them up. And if, if, uh, if I'm having, you know, any issue that they can't resolve on the phone, they've sent me parts, um, they've, you know, uh, given me tips and tricks. It's, uh, it's actually, I'm very pleased with the service that I've gotten from them after the sale. And they're a big advocate for, for me when, when the, when the engine failure happened, they were, they were in my corner, uh, with the dealer, making sure that the dealer took care of it at no cost to me. Now, one thing, you know, with that, like carburetor, for instance, isn't covered under a warranty in any small engine. So I had to pay for that, but you know, the rest of it was, was provided as a, a warranty service. So that was nice. Um, but service after the sale is important to me and I pay a premium for that. And, and Timber King has been excellent to me after the sale. Um, like I said, they've always gotten me squared away. If I had any issues, um, part orders, blades, things like that, they're always shipped really quick, you know, sent out to me. Um, I get them uh, with, with no hassle, no issue. So things like that are, are, are you know, important factors when looking at something this expensive because you're, you're, you're talking about a big investment here. And without service after the sale, um, it, 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 like I said, these things are wear out them. So parts are going to break. Things are going to need replaced. Things are going to need adjusted. You're going to need help from them because they know these mills way better than you do. Um, so having that in your corner after you purchase this, because purchasing it's only half the battle, um, keeping it going and keeping it efficient, keeping it running the way it's supposed to run, though, though you know, that, that's a challenge too, and, and you, you'll get better at that as, as time goes on, but uh, having them in your corner to help is a big plus, so something to consider, but uh, that's pretty much all I got for today. I uh, appreciate you for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to help out wherever I can, um, but thanks again for watching, everybody, and we'll see you later.